This tutorial will add layout templates and basic navigation to our Flutter website. Today's tutorial is a continuation of the Flutter web series. If you haven't been following along, you can download the code for part 2 over on fullstacks.com. The topic for today is template layouts and some basic navigation. Template layouts might not be the actual terminology for web development, but what I'm talking about is when a certain part of the website stays the same and the content is the only part that changes. If you look at the picture on screen, the blue section I want to keep the same for all the views and the red section is what the actual view will be swapping out. This is common in development frameworks and even in Gritsum, which is what Fullstacks is built on. You have your default layouts where you can define the layout of a view and then just change certain parts of it based on the information you pass to it. We'll be building a layout in a widget called Template Layout. This will contain the navigation bar as well as the logic to swap out the drawer in the mobile and desktop sizing. Go to the Views folder and create a new folder called Layout Template. Then inside that folder create a new file with the same name. Then we can go ahead and create a stateless widget and we'll name it Layout Template. Currently the UI that we want is all contained within the home view itself. So you can copy the content of the build function and you can paste it in the layout template exactly as it is. You can then just go through and import all of the missing widgets. And then we can completely cut out the child of the expanded widget. And since that is the content for the home view itself, we'll just paste that in the build function of the home view. Since we know we want the center of the screen to navigate, the expanded widget is that section. So we'll replace the child of the expanded widget with a navigator. This will allow us to navigate internally within that section only. There's three things that we'll supply to the navigator. The first one is a key so that we can navigate from anywhere within the app UI. We'll see why we need that later. The second thing is a function to generate the route that we are requesting. And the third thing is the initial route that we want to show. We'll start by setting up a service locator using GetIt so that we can supply a navigation service that contains our key. You can open up the pubspec YAML file and add GetIt as a package. Then under the lib file you can create a new locator dart file. We'll import the GetIt package and then store a global variable called locator of type GetIt which we'll set to the instance from the GetIt class. Then we'll create an empty function called setuplocator and over in the main file we'll call setuplocator before we call run app with our my app widget. The first thing we want to take care of is supplying the global key of the navigator state to our navigator. The key will be stored in a service which will be accessible through the locator using getit. Go to the lib folder and create a new folder under it called services. Then inside that folder create a new file called navigation service. Then inside you can create a new class called navigation service. We'll define a final public variable of type global key navigator state. We'll call it navigator key and create a new instance of it when the class is constructed. Then we'll define a function of type future that returns a type dynamic. We'll use this function to call the navigate functionality on the navigator state. We'll name this function navigate2 and we'll take in a string that will be the route name. For the body of this function, we'll simply return the navigator key's current state and we'll call the push named function passing in the route name. Then we'll create another function that returns a boolean called go back and that will simply index into the current state of the navigator key and call pop on that state. Let's go over the reason you need a navigator key in our specific scenario. Navigations will be happening inside the nav bar item. Usually how you navigate within a Flutter application is by calling navigator of and then you call your navigation function on the navigator that's been returned. What this does is use the inherited widget tree which means it will go up the tree and find the first navigator and return that as the navigator instance. This functionality is usually fine but if you navigate to our drawer item you see that we also contain the nav bar item. And keeping that in mind, if you go to the 
template layout file, you'll see that the navigation drawer, which is outside of the navigator, contains the navbar item. If we do a normal navigation using the navigator.of call, we won't get the navigator for our custom navigator. Instead, we'll get the one in the material app, which is in the root of the my app widget. Now for us to directly navigate using the navigator in the expanded child, we supply a key to this navigator and then when we call navigate on our service, it will use the key specifically linked to this navigator to replace the widget in that content. So that's all the explanation required for that. Head over to the locator file where we'll register our navigation service. We'll register it as a lazy singleton. This means that the class will only be constructed once it's requested. The singleton part of it means that there will only be one navigation service in existence for the entire lifetime of the app. Then you can head back to the layout template file and for the key of the navigator, we'll now get our locator and request the type navigation service. And on that type, when it's returned, we will supply the navigator key. Next thing to do is to supply the onGenerate route with a function that returns a route of type dynamic. So under the lib folder, create a new folder called routing. Then inside that folder, create a new file called route names. This will contain all of the names that we'll be navigating to in the application. We'll create a const string called home route and we'll set the value of the string to home. We'll do the same for the about route and set the value to about. And then we'll also do the same for the episodes. Next up, we'll supply the onGenerate route function. If we look at the definition of that function, we need a function that returns a route of type dynamic. So under the routing folder, create a new file called router. And inside that file, we'll create a top level function that returns a route of type dynamic called generate route. It takes in the route settings and we'll name that settings. We'll create a switch case statement and we'll switch on the name from the settings argument. The first case we'll pass in is the home route and we'll return the result from a function called get page route passing in the home view as the widget. Then underneath the generate route function, we'll create a new function that returns a page route called get page route. We'll add an underscore to keep it private. And for the body of this function, we'll simply return a material page route. And for the builder of the material page route, we'll return the child that has been passed in through the parameters. Then we can go ahead and duplicate the code for the home route. We'll replace the case with about route and then return the about view instead of the home view. We can do the same for the last case, returning the episodes route with the episodes view. Then we'll go ahead and quickly create those two empty views so that we can see the difference. So under views, create a new folder called about and inside create a new file called about view. We'll create a new stateless widget called about view. This will return a center widget with a text as a child and for the title of that text, we'll return about view. Then we can go ahead and copy all of the code for the about view and create a new folder under views called episodes. Inside that folder, we'll create a new file called episodes view and we'll paste all the about view code in there and change the name of the class to episodes view as well as the constructor. For the title of the text, we'll also update that to return episodes view. Then you can head back to the router file and import the about view as well as the episodes view. Now over in the layout template file, we can supply the onGenerate route function with our new top level function from the writer file called generate route. The last thing to supply for the navigator is the initial route, which we'll set as the home route. Then you can head over to the main file and change the home property to supply the layout template. We haven't changed anything, but just to confirm that everything is still working, you can run the code at this point and the website should still be a responsive website that we built in part two with nothing else having changed. Next up, we'll add the on tap functionality to our navbar items. Head over to the navbar item 
and then you can wrap the text widget with a new gesture detector widget we'll supply the on tap function and then just as a disclaimer i usually say this whenever i do it you should never use a service directly inside the ui to change the state of anything within the application what I use the services for in the UI is just to set up certain things like supply a key or to supply a manager from the UI side that can only be supplied from the UI side. The server should only be used within other services or within the view models. Because we don't have the view model set up yet, we don't want to make this tutorial extra long specifically to set up state management just to use the services properly. So for now, all we'll do is access the service within the UI. We'll get it from the locator and then we'll call a navigate to, passing it a new variable called navigate path. We'll pass that variable into the constructor of the navbar item as a positional argument. Then if you open up the problems tab in Visual Studio Code, you should see the places where you need to supply the navigation path. We'll pass in the correct path for each of the items based on the title. And then for the drawer item, we also need to add another positional argument. We'll give it the same name, navigation path, and set it as the last argument. And then for the navbar item, we'll supply that navigation path. Then you can head over to the navigation drawer file and supply the episodes route for the episodes item, and then the about route for the about item. Just as a little bonus, you can combine the draw item and the navbar item into one widget. You can return the draw item widget as the mobile layout and you can return the current navbar item widget as the desktop and tablet layout. You can do it as an exercise to practice the responsive pattern that I showed you in part two. I'll be doing that off screen. So in the next part, you'll see that in the starting code already. If you run the code now and you click on episodes or about, you'll see it navigating only the content, but it uses the native material page route navigation, which I don't like for a website. Head over to the router file and we'll create a new fade transition using a page route builder. We'll create a new class called fade route that extends the page route builder. We'll pass in a widget named child to the constructor. And for the base constructor of the page route builder, you have to supply a page builder. This function takes a build context. It takes an animation of type double called animation. And it also has a secondary animation of type double, which we'll call secondary animation. For this function, we'll simply return the child that has been passed into the constructor of the fade route. The second parameter is called transitions builder. It takes in the same three parameters in the same order with one additional parameter at the end being the child itself. For the body of this function, we'll return a fade transition, which is a built in flutter widget. We'll set the opacity equal to the first animation value. And for the child, we will supply the child value returned from the function. To make use of the fade route class, we'll replace the material page route with a fade route and replace the builder with a child property name. If you run the code and you navigate now, you should see the view fade in and out as you change between them. To make this more apparent, it's easier when the container has a fixed clear color and not just text that's overlapping. Head over to the episodes view and we'll replace the body of the build function with a container and we'll set the color of that container to blue. Then you can head over to the about view and we'll return a container as well and set the color of that container to red. And now when you run this code, if you click on one of the navigation items, you should see the fade happening more clearly now. It goes from blue to red and this also happens if you go into the mobile view and navigate from the drawer itself. That's it for the basic navigation today. When we do the more advanced navigation, we'll look at how we match the URL in the browser with the content being shown in the middle of the screen. I haven't looked at that yet, so I wouldn't be able to add it into this tutorial. The second thing we look at for the advanced navigation will be to hook up the back button, as well as URL direct browsing and deep linking into your website. 
Thank you for watching this week's tutorial. I'll see you guys next week.